Yuri Borovman, optimizing similar item recommendations uh, from eBay. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Yuri Brahman. I'm a data scientist at eBay, and I'm coming to you from the merchandising team in New York, and we're responsible for all the recommendation systems on eBay. And today I'll be talking to you about a specific algorithm on how to optimize similar item recommendations. So let's first talk about uh, eBay and what are some of the challenges that we face when we serve recommendations. Uh, well, to start is the scale. Um, so on any given time, there's uh, over 800 million live items on the site, and there's over 150 million users um, that, that use the site. Uh, so that's, that's a problem of scale. Another challenge is that we have uh, limited structured data coverage. So some people sell um, iPhones, which are very specific products and have uh, structured data attributes in, in a catalog. But then on the other side, you have things like antiques, or various pieces of clothing that have uh, no, um, no such attributes, and that makes uh, certain recommendations difficult. Another problem is volatility. So some items on the site only appear for one week and never surface again. So all these combined make it very difficult to use traditional collaborative filtering methods, and I'll show you some of the approaches that we use to overcome these challenges. So specifically, the algorithm that I'll be talking to you is on the item page. So for example, here we have a typical item page on an e-commerce site. We have a, a picture, a title, a price, and right below we have five similar item recommendations. And so our goal here is to find the most similar items and to, of course, maximize conversion uh, for eBay. So some of the other engineering challenges that we face is we serve about uh, 400 million impressions uh, every day. And our response time has to be below 200 milliseconds end to end. So that limits uh, some of the uh, approaches that we can tape just due to response time. So let's dive right in. Uh, this is a uh, diagram of our, our architecture. It's, uh, it's a bit involved, but uh, I'll step through it. So we have the input here is the seed item. So that's the item that you're looking at on the item page. Uh, and the output is the recommended items that we serve. So it goes into our merchandising backend platform, and we have uh, two steps uh, similar to a search paradigm, where we have a recall stage and a ranking stage. Now, we can't rank 800 million items uh, in, in uh, runtime, so we, that's why we break it up into these two stages. So for the recall, we have a few different sources where we get items that are similar by some degree to this to original uh, seed item. And so I've shown uh, a few here. So if the item is a product, like an iPhone, then it'll have a product ID, and we can query our search service for, uh, for that specific product and return all items uh, there. Uh, another one is doing title similarity. So just doing item, uh, the seed item to potential recommendation items, we can uh, match the title. And we use uh, a home-built uh, Elasticsearch cluster, uh, which we return item titles very fast. Uh, a third recall sort is based on uh, co-views, and this is a behavioral model of uh, co-viewed co, uh, co items, where the user would see item A and B, and perhaps another user would like item B as well. And we have an offline job where we uh, process the data in Hadoop uh, and store it in a Redis cache for fast access at runtime. And this is very modular. Uh, we can expand any number of additional recall sets, and uh, most recently we've added a image similarity a module uh, where we uh, use uh, deep learning to uh, um, make a similar image um, recommendation. So once we have those, then we go to the ranking stage, and that's where we use uh, machine learned rankings. We use implicit user uh, feedback in terms of clicks and purchases, store the data in Hadoop, uh, use Spark to uh, process the data, and have an offline model um, that, that we uh, train and then pass the parameters uh, to the real-time platform where we rank the recommendations in real-time. So in terms of the machine learning rankings, uh, we use a point-wise ranking approach where we reduce the uh, ranking problem to a binary classifier, and we rank the recommendation based on the probability of purchase. So in, a, in terms of search, uh, the, the pairs that you would train on are a, uh, a keyword to URL pair, uh, whereas we train on a seed item and recommended item pairs. So for example, in this uh, impression, we would have 
um, the seed and uh, recommended item. So in the labels where we would have something like click, non-clicked, non-clicked and purchased as something example, where this item would never be clicked on, but this item, for example, user would click on and subsequently purchase. Um, and I'll show you why uh, we chose ultimately uh, the class labels to be non-clicked and, and purchased. So this is our uh, sampling strategy. And initially, we were trying to figure out, well, what is the best way, uh, what are the class labels that we should choose? And initially, we, we went with um, non-clicked and clicked as sort of a, an, obvious, uh, an obvious choice. Uh, but what we found is that uh, actually the, there's not a lot of class separability between those, those two classes. So here I'm showing you two histograms uh, on the left one where we have the clicked and non-clicked class um, in this uh, price feature score. Um, and you can see there's a, a lot of overlap between the two. And we looked at a few different choices with uh, non-purchased and purchased, clicked and non-purchased and purchased, as well as non-clicked and purchased as the two uh, classes. And we used the KL divergence score uh, as a uh, quantitative measure in, uh, to, de to define the, those, those class labels. And what we found is that the non-clicked and purchased were the two uh, was the best strategy, and you can um, explain that in terms of user uh, interaction. The non-clicked items, the user had absolutely no intention, whereas the purchased items, you have a conversion, you have something that ult ultimately what we want. And so the, the click class was sort of in, in between, and it wasn't as useful um, to uh, define a binary classifier. Um, so here's some uh, classification metrics. We, um, this is a, a ROC and precision recall curve. And uh, of course, those are very nice, but um, offline metrics. But how does it actually perform in the real world? And of course, to do that, we've uh, done uh, A-B test. Um, and we have a very good uh, improvement in lift in uh, key operational metrics in terms of click-through rate, purchase-through rate, and, and revenue. And we launched this model to uh, worldwide in, uh, in January. So to conclude, uh, we made a highly scalable architecture um, to serve um, recommendations and unstructured uh, uh, semi-structured marketplace, and we've developed a widely actable and interpretable machine learning ranking model um, to rank these recommendations. We've, uh, we're going to do some uh, feature engineering, use better models, and uh, of course dive into deep learning um, soon. Thank you. We do have time for a couple of questions. Hi, thanks for the great talk. And I had a question. So in the recommendation scenario, especially with a very volatile uh, inventory, you probably are presented with a, a problem to recommend items that are very fresh and very popular, but they haven't actually made all the way through the offline processing system to accumulate the necessary features for native recommendation. Does your system handle this uh, natively, or do you build separate components to facilitate those fast serving items? So we're actually building additional components to handle uh, those specific uh, latencies. Some of our features um, don't necessarily, are not necessarily um, they don't have that, that's not a problem for them. Um, some things like price. Um, basically, we found that um, you know, users you know, want to find something similar to what the seed price is. And so that's not going to actually change uh, as a function of volatility. Thank you. Hi. Um, thanks for an interesting talk. Um, I have a question. Uh, in eBay, there, there might be you know, very different places when you do recommendation. Mm -hmm. You showed one example. Yes. Um, is there a framework of how do you do optimization over cross pages on different locations of the pages in terms of recommendation? Right. So we have about uh, probably something like 20 different places on the site, uh, and this is uh, and maybe five different algorithms. So I just talked about one of them. Um, we don't have uh, a way to optimize cross page yet, but we're, we're actually starting to work on, on that. One more question. I think for the similar items, there could be different interpretation of similar. So I wonder, in your kind of purchase-driven metric, what kind of, I mean, human interpretation about this similar? 
Absolutely. So that's that's basically designed in the features. I didn't really go into what our feature is, but we look at uh, things like price similarity, conditions, um, format, um, image similarity, so a variety of those uh, kind of uh, text similarity, a variety of those kind of features, and we combine them with our machine learning ranking model. Yeah, but I didn't really go into it, but in the paper, um, there's more. So please read it. All right, let's thank the speaker again.